Hello scientists, this is unit 5, energy and work, and we're going to do lab 5.04 today. But first of all, let's talk about types of energy. Um, there are different types of chemical energy. Right here there's a match burning. You have chemical energy in the food that you eat. You turn that into heat energy and mechanical energy. There's of course light energy, which you're familiar with, which if you've ever turned on a light bulb and in turning on that light bulb you're converting electrical energy into light energy. And this is a thermograph that's a heat picture of a light bulb because your light bulbs are also giving off heat energy. Mechanical energy is the energy of movement. Um, if you have a fan around your house you know how to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. There's also nuclear energy and sound energy. Energy is never created or destroyed. It's always conserved. It just changes form. So we've got all these forms of energy and energy can change forms but it never just goes away or disappears or is destroyed. It just changes forms. It's always, always conserved. It's an important thing to remember when we're talking about energy. It's converted from one form to another. We talked a little bit about that. Here's another way to convert electrical to mechanical. If you have an electrical drill, um, you plug that in and the electricity turns into mechanical energy that makes a hole in something. And Or if you're powering your own drill, you're turning your lunch or breakfast, that chemical energy, into mechanical energy, the energy of movement. Energy changes from one form to another. If you use solar cells, you can convert light to electricity. And anytime you turn on a match, you light a match. Chemical energy from the wood, from the phosphorus on the tip here, is turning into heat and light energy. And in nuclear power plants, they turn the energy inside the nucleus into heat, and that heat is turned into electrical energy. Remember last time we talked about when you add heat energy to atoms, their kinetic energy increases. That means their energy of movement increases. They move faster. Today we're going to talk about kinetic and potential energy in pendulums. I have here a pendulum, and when you hold it up like this, it has potential energy. It has the potential to swing back and forth. And when it's actually moving, it's got kinetic energy. Potential energy is energy of position. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. Right here in the swing, is where the pendulum is going to have the most kinetic energy. It has the most potential to get moving. Let's head to the lab and look at the lab 5.04 lab sheet and we'll use this simulation to do some exploring with pendulums. You can see here that the map how do mass and string length affect the, pen, the period of a pendulum is the main question that we're trying to answer. And the period of a pendulum is how long it takes to make one complete trip back to where it started. So a complete period would be swinging here and then swinging back up to where it started. The question we're asking is what affects that period or how long it takes to swing back and forth. Here are the directions. You can um, see that in the first experiment we're going to look at period versus changing the mass. How does changing the mass affect that period or the time it takes to swing back and forth? In the second experiment we're going to look at how does the length of this string affect the period or the time to swing back and forth. And we'll go over these directions here in just a minute. 
The goal or question for this lab for question one is how do mass and string length affect the period of a pendulum? Period is the type, the time to swing back and forth or one whole cycle. For number three, I'd like you to state your hypothesis for that first experiment with an if-then because statement about how you think mass will change the time for a, a pendulum to swing back and forth. If you think changing the mass of the bob, that's the thing that's hanging off the string here, will that change the time it takes for the pendulum to get back and forth? And make sure you use an if-then because statement. If we change the mass, then the length of the period will, will it increase, will it decrease, or will it stay the same? You have to fill that in yourself. And explain why you think that's going to happen. Use what you've learned um, from real life experience and from your physical science class. The second hypothesis is about how the period is going to be affected by the length of the string. If we lengthen or shorten the string, for the pendulum, how is that going to change the time it takes for it to go back and forth? So if we change the length of the string, let's make that if we lengthen the string so we can show the direction of the change. If we lengthen the string, then what's going to happen to the period of the pendulum? Is it going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? You're going to need to choose one of those and you're going to need to explain in your because part of the hypothesis. So here's our first data table that we need to fill in and I filled in a couple for you but I'll show you where I got those numbers. So here's the lab with the pendulum and here is where we can adjust the pendulum. If you read the directions, you can find out that you want the length to be 2.00 meters, and you can just enter that, or you can use the slider here. And you want the mass to be 100 grams, which is 0.1 kilograms. You can use the mass slider here, or you can just enter it right here. You want the time, or you want the planet to be Earth. You want to be working in real time and you want a photo gate timer here so you check that right here above the reset button and I'll show you what the photo gate button does in just a second when you pull your pendulum up it's paused right now you want to go to 15 degrees you can see the readout it'll show up right here anytime you grab the pendulum the degree readout will show up right up here so pay attention to that. You always want to use 15 degrees for this experiment. Remember, we want to keep everything the same, except, in this case, the mass of the pendulum in the first experiment. So keep everything the same except the mass in the first experiment. And in the second experiment, you're going to change the length of the string. So when I hit play here, the pendulum's going to swing back and forth. Now normally pendulums stop swinging and they lose amplitude after a while, but this is in a perfect world where there's no friction. So we can just let our pendulum swing and anytime we're ready, you can hit start and it records the time from the middle to go back and forth and come back to the middle. That's what the photo gate timer does. I'll do it again so you can see what's going on. So it starts timing from the middle times one out and one back and then it stops. So this is the time for one period. I'll pause it now. So we can take this time here 2.849 seconds and we can take it to our data table. So here's our data table one on our lab sheet, and I've entered that time. We use mass of 100 grams, which remember is 0.1 kilograms. And this is time for 10 periods, but this time here 
is just the time for one period. The photogate timer just times one period. So what we need to do is multiply this number times 10, and that just means moving the decimal place one point to the right. So 2.849 seconds, when you multiply it by 10, becomes 28.49 seconds. Now it's your job to go and repeat this experiment two more times to get trial two and trial three for a pendulum that's 100 grams or 0.1 kilograms and two meters. We're going to continue here. We're going to use 0.3 kilograms or 300 grams and I'm going to keep the string length the same here. So we're going to adjust the mass to do the second part of the first experiment. We're going to go up to 0.3 kilograms here. So I just use the slider bar or you can type it in right here. We're going to keep everything else the same. We're only changing the mass in this first experiment. We want to use 15 degrees again. And then we can release the pendulum. And start the timer. And we got 2.849 seconds again. Let's do it one more time just to make sure. Two point eight four nine for both trials. So here we go. We can put in our data two point eight four nine. And then we need to multiply that by 10, remember, because we only timed one swing. And we did a second trial, 2.849, which is going to become 28.49. Because this is time for 10 periods, we only timed one. I'm going to let you go do the experiment where you change the mass, keep the string length the same, change the mass to 0.5 kilograms, which is also 500 grams and get the time for one period and multiply it by 10. And then when you're done, you're going to graph your data here. Let's work on data table two together. This time in experiment two, we're gonna change the string length. We've been working at two meters here we're going to keep the mass the same at 300 grams or 0.3 kilograms, and we're going to change the string length in the second part of this experiment. So in the second part of the experiment here, I am going to change the length, and I'm going to keep the mass the same. So our variable in the second experiment for table two, we're going to change the length, but not the mass. I've already changed the length here to one meter for the second part of the experiment. Let's see how that changes the period. I'm using 15 degrees and we'll start the photo gate timer. So the timer says 2.0145 seconds. Let's start that again and double check. 2.0145. So we'll take that to our data table here. So I've put our two trials for the one meter string length in here, but this is the time for one period. Um, the reason this experiment originally had 10 periods is because you had to count it swinging back and forth. You didn't have a photo gate timer. But multiplying by 10 here for 10 periods also makes it easier to compare your numbers and to graph them. So we'll multiply both these times that we got in the experiment by 10, and we have 20, 20 seconds and 145 thousandths of a second. Now, we're going to change the string length here to 1.25 meters or 125 centimeters. 
you can see our simulation here, our pendulum is still going and it's still swinging with the same amplitude. The same